Now that we discussed the concept of a quark, let's take a look at the following example in which we're going to use the quark combinations to determine what the hadron particle is. So use the following quark table to determine the hadron particle that is produced from the following four quark combinations. And let's begin with A. So in A, we have three different quarks that we are combining and that means this must be a baryon. So we have two up quarks and one down quark. And let's begin by determining what the total charge is on this particular baryon. So the U has a charge of two thirds while the D has a charge of negative one third. So positive two thirds multiplied by two minus one third that gives us a charge of one. So we have positive two thirds plus two thirds minus one third gives us a charge of one E. So this is the charge on our particle, whatever this particle is. What about the baryon number? Well, we have a baryon number of one third, one, uh, one third, and one third. We have two U's. So that means if we multiply by three, we have three multiplied by one third and that gives us a baryon number of positive one. What about the S, the strangeness? Well, each one of these has a strangeness of zero, so they sum up to zero. What about the charm? The charm is also zero for the up and the down, so we put a zero. What about the bottomness and the topness? Well, the bottomness is a zero and the topness is also a zero. So that means we place a zero. And so whatever this baryon is, it has a charge of positive one and a baryon number of positive one. And this corresponds to a proton. So this is a proton with a positive one charge. What about part B? So now we have a combination of a quark and an anti-quark, so that means this must be a meson. But what meson is this? Well, let's begin by calculating the charge. So the charge on the D, the down, is negative one-third. So let's put negative one-third. What about the charge on the anti-U? So this is basically the, the up anti-quark. So the charge on the up quark quark is positive two-thirds and that means the charge on the anti or the up anti quark is negative two-thirds and this gives us a total charge of negative one E. What about the baryon number? Well the baryon number on the up or on the D is given by one-third but the baryon number on the up anti quark is negative one-third so we have positive one-third minus negative or minus one-third gives us a zero. So the baryon number on this meson is zero. What about the strangeness? Well, the strangeness for D is given to be zero. And the strangeness for U is also given to be zero. So the strangeness for the up anti-quark is also zero. What about the charm? Well, the charm on the down quark is given by zero. The charm on the up quark is given by zero. So the charm on the up anti-quark is also zero. Now, if we, if we follow the same procedures for the bottomness and topness, we get a zero. And if we look up what this corresponds to on a table, let's say in a textbook or online, we'll see that this is in fact the pi meson. Specifically, it's the pi negative meson because it has a negative one charge. So the pi meson, also called the pion, has these corresponding properties. What about C? Well now once again we have a meson because we have a combination of a quark and an anti-quark. So our quark is the bottom quark and our anti-quark is the up anti-quark, same as in part B. So let's begin by calculating the charge. 
So B has a charge of negative one third. So we have negative one third. And from this part, we know that the up anti quark has a charge of negative two thirds. And this gives us negative one. Now, what about the baryon number? Well, for B, the baryon number is one third. And for the anti quark, the up anti quark, we have negative one third. So that gives us zero as in part B. What about S? What about the strangeness? Well, we see that the strangeness for the B as well as the up anti quark is zero. So we put a zero here. What about the charm? Well, the charm for the B, the bottom one, is zero. And we see the charm for our up quark or up anti quark is also zero. <coughs> what about the bottomness? Well, we have our bottom quark, so that means we have a negative one, and this has a bottomness of zero, so we simply put a positive, a negative one for the bottomness. What about our topness? Well, the topness in this case is zero, because only the top quark gets a value for the topness, and our top anti quark also has the opposite value for the topness because we don't have any top quarks or top anti quarks this is zero so if once again we look up what these correspond to on some table let's say online or in a textbook this will give us the B particle and this B particle, which is a meson, has a charge of negative. So another way to write this is simply B with the negative. Now finally, let's move on to part D. So we have USS, so we have the combination of three different, or three quarks. And so that means this must be a baryon, just like in part A. So we have the up, the strange, and the strange quarks. So the up has a charge of positive two-thirds. The strange has a charge of negative one-third. So we basically have two-thirds minus one-third minus one-third gives us a zero charge. What about the baryon number? Well, we have a baryon number of one-third for each one of these quarks. So we have one-third plus one-third plus plus one third and that gives us that gives us one what about the strangeness well we have two strange quarks and each strange quark is given a strangeness of negative one the up has a strangeness of zero so because each one of these get a negative one we have negative one minus one gives us negative two what about the charm well none of these have any charm only the charmed quark has a charm of positive one and so that means we have a zero so notice we have no bottom quarks and we have no top quarks so these get a zero now what particle what baryon particle corresponds to a charge of zero a baryon number of one a strangeness of negative two charm of zero bottomness of zero and topness of zero well this happens to be the C with a zero charge. So this basically corresponds to our baryon particle. So we have two baryon particles and we have two meson particles as shown.